the B580 was the first GPU launch in years that people were genuinely excited about, and Intel is hoping to keep that hype train chugging along with the new, cheaper, Intel Arc B570. It's a slightly cut down version of the B580, and today we're looking at the ASRock Challenger OC version. And, oh uh, well, uh, it's a GPU, who would have expected? In the box we also got quick installation guides and a warranty notice, and that's about it. It's a nice reasonably sized card, which I'm happy to see because some of the AIB designs for the B580 were like needlessly large. Like it, it did not need a triple fan design at a 190 watt card. This is nice and relatively small, though it is a little tall. So if you have a pretty narrow case, you might come into compatibility issues, but I, I would expect this to fit pretty much anywhere you'd want to put it. Just looking around the card, we can see that it has a single eight pin VGA power connector because this is a card that doesn't require a lot of juice, just 150 watts. They do recommend a 600 watt power supply, which honestly, depending on your CPU is probably gonna be overkill. But in our 580 review, we did notice that there are chances of large transient spikes on these Intel cards. So your mileage may vary. I take the recommendation that's on the box. And it's got three DisplayPort 2.1s and one HDMI 2.1a. The slot is a 16x connection, though it is just a 8x card. You got a PCIe slot cover, I don't know. Uh, what is there to say about a graphics card? I think this one's ugly. I wouldn't buy this uh, for its looks. ASRock advertises that it has a stylish backplate, but it's stylish if you like Tonka trucks and or rocket ships. I do like that it ha maintains the flow through cooler design. The board itself, looks a little bit longer than the reference ones from Intel on the B580, but um, I don't really think that that's an issue. I also think that the nice big fans are gonna be great for quiet operation, even if it is a little uggo, because they've maintained this nice flow through cooler. You can kind of see through here, like look at how much space you have behind on the back plate. It's just kind of needless. But that's just what's on the outside. It's what's on the inside that counts. And inside this is the B570. So let's talk a little bit about what that means. As I said earlier, the B570 is a slightly cut down version of the B580. This is 10 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory versus the 12 gigabytes found on the B580. And it's still based on Intel's XE2 architecture. The new XE2 architecture comes with basically improvements to every single possible part. It is quite the change over the original XE architecture that's found on the Alchemist series of GPUs. And it has caused a massive uplift in performance and huge improvements in efficiency. But does that 10% cut result in a 10% hit to performance? Well, I'll tell you all about it. We'll have graphs from the labs, but you do have to wait through this sponsor section. Thanks to Jawa for sponsoring today's video. Sell your old graphics card and offset the cost of a new one with the help of Jawa, an online marketplace for gamers and PC enthusiasts. All you have to do is follow the steps on their site to get an instant quote and a free shipping label. That's right, no more going through the hassle of listing them for sale yourself and having to actually talk to real life people Ew. They'll also have some PCs with the new B570 put together by their verified builders soon, so stay tuned for those if you're looking for something ready to go. Click the link in the description to learn more today. One thing I noticed right away is that that RGB is really bright, um, needlessly so. What's a little bit more enjoyable is the fact that the fans have a zero decibel mode where they just don't run when uh, things are nice and cool. Uh, you appreciate it, you love to not hear it. As I was saying, the B570 is a cut down version of the B580 by about 10% but it's usually not a one-to-one -one thing. The 4070 Ti and the 4070 Super are the same chip, but their performance and their CUDA core counts do not correlate one-to-one. -one. The difference in CUDA cores is greater than the difference in performance between those two cards. That's pretty normal. Usually the gap is a little bit smaller. So I'm hoping to see that this card performs closer to the maybe just 8% worse than the B580? That's kind of optimistic. So the B580, already a great price, 250 bucks for a really highly performant card. B570 is coming in $30 cheaper, except for this one specifically, because it's an OC variant, uh, it's $10 more. But that $10 brings a 100 megahertz OC from the factory, which brings it pretty close to how fast the B580 runs. The B580 runs at 2670 megahertz, and the ASRock Challenger B570 is running at 2600 megahertz. So maybe that'll make up some of the performance even more. Let's take a look at labs numbers. Across all of our games in 1080, we see the Intel Arc B580 outperforming the B570 by about 15.5% for the average FPS and 16% 
for low FPS. And that's kind of disappointing considering that this is just a Prezi Jack away from $250. You could literally skip lunch twice and like buy a better GPU. It's almost too close in price for it to make a ton of sense. It doesn't appear to have any major problems in any specific games across our suite. It's a consistent loss. Yeah, Alec 2, there's nothing interesting. Black Myth, Wukong, none of these cards can really handle it with not even the 4060 being able to pass 30 frames per second. To be fair, Black Myth Wukong is at cinematic settings, uh, which kind of brings every system to its knees, but the 4060 is only winning by seven to 12%. And that card is still $300. The question might be, do you want the 580 right now and can't get it because it's pretty hard to get? Well, maybe you can deal with the 570, but even then it's just, that's a pretty big disappointment in terms of performance relative to the B580's price. And at 1080p ray tracing, it doesn't really get any better. The 4060 and the B580 both lead the B570 by about 16% in average frame rates. And in 1% lows, the 4060 wins by 20%. <laughs> it's kind of a blowout. And the B580 is at 19% better. When you're not saving that much money, it becomes hard to justify that much of a performance hit. When we look at 1440p, the story gets a little bit better for the B570. Just as we saw with Alchemist GPUs and with the B580, Intel really scales well when the resolution is cranked. The B570 basically catches right up with the RTX 4060. The RTX 4060 is only leading by about 2% in averages and 4.7% in lows. That's a really compelling offer, right? Like this is $70 cheaper than the 4060, but it's just not as clear of a victory as the B580 was, which was basically just an obvious win. Do you know what is kind of crazy? For how hard Nvidia pushes Cyberpunk, it doesn't win <laughs> in any resolution against the Intel cards. I guess this is as good of a time as any to talk about an elephant that has been in the room. Hardware Unboxed found that on lower tier CPUs, Intel could fall really far behind compared to the RTX 4060. But when you pair it with a high-end CPU, like how what reviewers typically use to test GPUs to make sure that there's no bottlenecks, it starts to look a lot better. It scales massively, which I know that you might be getting cynical. There is probably, you probably wanna go, oh, they just made sure it was optimized for whatever the reviewers used so that the reviewers would praise it and give it good press. And I'm not saying that they didn't do that, but what I am saying is that it's more likely tied to significant driver overhead which means that if you are bottlenecked at the CPU, the bottleneck's gonna be way tighter on an Intel card than on an Nvidia card. Uh, there are some real deep dives that have been done. Chips and Cheese did a really interesting blog post where he broke down API calls as well as like everything that's going into a specific frame while it's rendering on the arc that shows that there is a lot of efficiency gains that Intel still needs to make that it's gonna reduce the load on your CPU. But it's important to know that the whole reason that we test with high-end CPUs is to show the hardware working without a bottleneck. So, you know, your mileage may vary. It would be fair to expect that Intel's gonna probably overcome these issues. Obviously, you should never buy a product based on future promises that it will improve. You should only purchase something based on how it is at the moment you get it. So make sure to take a look at those other articles and videos before you make a purchasing decision. Also, you should take a look at the live stream that we're doing where we're gonna be testing out any game that viewers are asking for on the new B570 to see how they run, to see if those driver issues are getting worked on. We will say, it's better than it was a few years back with our Alchemist, but clearly there's still some work to be done. On top of that, you also have features like XESS2, um, which comes with a whole host of features. They have like an NVIDIA Reflex clone, a frame gen clone, as well as a super sampling clone. XESS's like super resolution and stuff is quite good. Um, and their frame gen's probably arguably better than AMD's, but it's a very quiet card. Uh, and if that's a priority for you, I think you'd be pretty happy. Um, if we take a look at hardware info, how are we doing for temperatures? Staying at 60. I wonder if we can get it a little bit higher and see how loud this thing will get under an intense load. It's hitting about 70 degrees on the GPU. Uh, the core temperature is at 56. Memory temperature is at 70. The GPU global temperature is usually the one you wanna look at. The GPU global setting is just the hottest sensor that is on this card. It's, it's very quiet for staying at 70 degrees Celsius. 
Also, it should be noted, it's on a test bench. This is like a best case scenario thermally, and we're not running it for a super long time. If it was in a case, it would saturate the air and you'd see temperatures climb. The max temperatures for these GPUs is I believe 85 degrees Celsius. So you're not, it doesn't seem like we're too close, though it might actually be lower on this card because it looks like we are down clocking now that we are at 72 degrees. We're actually hitting above what the OC says. It's reporting 2750 megahertz and 2650 megahertz. And it's supposed to be OC'd to just 2600 megahertz. Yeah, it's still dead quiet. Uh, if you wanted, you could easily make a trade off for a little bit more noise if you wanted it to run even cooler. Now we're settling in at 2600. So maybe it's gonna, at the start of a heavy workload, it's gonna overshoot that OC, but now it's kind of settling in. So on top of getting XCSS2, you also have other great features like a super capable uh, encoder and decoder on the card. Uh, QuickSync is awesome. So if you're somebody who's into streaming and you wanna do AV1 encoding or even just typical H.264 stuff, you're gonna have a super high performance card that's gonna be able to handle a lot of streams or a, like a really high resolution video. This has the same encoder and decoder. It's not cut down in any way compared to what's on the B580. So you can check out our review on that. Honestly, I think that it's just not really enough to justify how small of a price cut it is. The fact that it doesn't keep up with the 4060 is a bummer. Even though price to performance, it probably still puts up a good fight. I just really think that if you can find a B580 at MSRP, you're just gonna be better off with that. So like, why does this exist? If this was at $200, it would be super compelling, though it would risk Intel kind of probably cannibalizing their own sales. So I can see why they kind of had to, you know, make a decision. But if all of the AIB OC cards are gonna be just $20 cheaper than a reference B580, or even just $30 cheaper than like an AIB B580, why does this exist? The answer is probably yields, Intel, uh, we'll have B580 chips that just aren't gonna be functioning properly. Turn off a few of those cores, slap a new name on it, and you can sell that. If it is for yields and they're trying to sell through stuff, they should make a more compelling price offer. But as we've seen, there's already availability problems with the B580, so maybe that'll soften that, but I don't know. Thank you for watching Short Circuit. If you like this video, uh, check out the live stream uh, where we try out a ton of different games. We'll probably play Marvel Rivals on that live stream, or take a look at another GPU that we've covered on this channel.